Welcome back to Speed Demon Painting, where I'll be going over how I painted the bikes from the Iron Horses. I did them in a lawman theme, and in our previous video we went over the sub-assemblies that, uh, that I used for this bike. Now, the first step um, was to paint all the metallics. I'm about halfway through one of the bikes in this footage. Um, there's not a lot to show here, it's just essentially painting all the metallics uh, to resemble the test model I did uh, in the previous step. I always work out one of those vehicles just to make sure that the color scheme is balanced and that I sort of like what I'm seeing. I don't finish it all the way to the end, I just make sure that the main colors are blocked in and that you can see what, uh, yeah, what the overall balance will be at the end. You have to do the same for the front cow catcher part of the sub assembly and it's you know just a case of being as neat as you can and applying a second thin coat where needed because paints don't often cover in one go so just a case of going around the entire thing the next step would be to paint the leather parts of the saddle um, I use some uh, Saigor brown but it's a contrast paint that is very very thick and very pigmented so I thin it down with about half um, airbrush thinner to sort of you know, have it flow slightly better. Um, I also I mixed this in the pot already because I don't think this paint is quite very usable otherwise. It's a very solid and well covering brown paint though but the whole contrast effect of there being lighter parts on the raised areas is lost I think if you don't add a bit of thinning to it. And yeah, then it's just a case of going around, making sure the central part of the saddle is done, and uh, getting all of the you know, sort of the, the backrests of it done. Contrasts do take a while to dry, so I left it for a while uh, before I continued picking out the black details, um, mostly around the saddle and the back part. Again, you can use the reference of the very first bit of the video to see what parts I did uh, in, in black. I diluted it quite a bit, uh, it needs to be to flow quite uh, to flow well and you will be needing a brush that has a fine tip on it to paint this because there are some very annoying uh, crooks and um, sort of, you know, parts in between the leather bits that you don't want to get black paint on so if you can get one with a very nice sharp tip. This is a size 4 brush but at the end it doesn't matter because as you can see from the footage it's got a razor sharp tip on it and that's all you really need. Uh, for painting. Cherish, cherish those, uh, those brushes, take good care of them because you know, as it starts wearing out uh, you'll lose that tip. And with that sharp tip you can sort of get in between, do the armor panels uh, and you sort of have to work your way around it and go across the model until those parts are all painted up in black and then you can get ready for the next stage. Uh, this does take a while but most of the times doing the base coats is the, the longest part of any paint job. Um, fixing them up and highlighting is actually the fast bit. Uh, it's especially fast for the black parts because I just relied on a quick dry brush with this Vallejo heavy grey blue colour which I just love uh, for, uh, for some quick and easy highlights. It's a dry brush so you always want to have some tissue uh, near you and you sort of work the paint in between the bristles. Don't use a wet palette for this. I just use the lid for uh, my wet palette. You wipe off most of the paint and then you rub it uh, across the back of your hand a few times just to make sure that you don't have any of those gaudy streaks that you can get when you're doing dry brushing. Um, I also use a very fine bullet tipped makeup brush for this one um, so it gives me a lot more control. I don't want to get too much paint on the, the black leather um, if you do, it's not the end of the world because we will be touching up those leather parts, but try to avoid it if you can. And just go around the whole thing. Um, try to use the edges of the model to your advantage. The dry brush is mostly there to catch paint on those sharp edges, so running your dry brush against it is sort of the best way to achieve this. And I also went around and dry brushed the front part of the, the cow catcher so you get some nice sharp lining on it. Now, at this stage, with the metallics done, the brown leather done and the white part done, I apply a thin down coat of uh, quick shade from uh, the Army Painter. However, I do thin this down with some matte medium uh, because I think it's a bit too shiny otherwise. And I don't want the, the pigmentation to be too strong because it's going over white parts as well. Um, you can have some shading on there and it will 
the pooling of it will be nice on it, but it requires a lot of thinning uh, to achieve this. And yeah, I divided my model up into two parts essentially, uh, the front half and the second one. I used the saddle armor part as sort of the, the splitting line between it. And it's just a case of going around with this wash, making sure you don't get any uh, excessive pooling on some of the parts, you just pick it up and you push the pigments around to the places where you want some natural shading to occur and uh, you, know, you just go around uh, till all of it is done. This is also a step that takes quite a long time to dry so when you're done with them uh, be patient put them away for about at least half an hour but I would suggest even an hour before you do the second half of it. Um, I'm only showing footage really of the first half because it's just me slapping on some uh, some wash and removing any excess like I'm doing here. I'm seeing it pulling up a bit too much so you can always just dry it away or pull it away rather. Um, it's an acrylic wash so it dries fairly quickly but you do have some work time because of the thinning of the whole thing. Now when it's all done this is about what it looks. However I did cheat a bit and I did apply a few glazes of the Ulthuan Grey on the top of the hood, uh, the, the fuel tank essentially. Um, this is a pre-mixed air paint so it's incredibly thin. You dab off most of the excess and you start building up thin layers to you know, get some more highlights going, um, some volume highlights I should say on the rest. The other highlights are just done using white paint and I don't thin it here because I'm trying to apply sharp edge highlights uh, so I don't want it too thin. Having slightly thicker paint isn't the end of the world if you're doing edge highlights. In fact it helps to keep them nice and tidy because as you can see you're just running your brush onto the sides of it and you know, having slightly thicker paint that grabs onto those edges is not the end of the world. Don't use it at a, like a glaze consistency. Now just go around the whole thing until it start, ends up looking like this. Um, if you want to paint white, uh, avoid painting it white, avoid uh, paint it in a light grey like with the wind grey and use white as your very edge highlights. The next step was to add a few rust washes. Uh, this is Vallejo pigment mixed in with some uh, matte medium and I just go around with this rust m uh, wash with a very fine brush and only really pick out the rivets. I don't want to cover the whole part of the bike in rust. Uh, some build up like around rivets makes sense but this is a police bike and I don't think the Federer, you know, the marshals are going around with rusty old bikes, that doesn't look right. But you know, some minor applications around those rivets really do make them pop as well. Um, so it's, it's not a long step, it's a very quick one and it really does bring out a model. If you don't have any rust pigments you can always use a medium brown orange tone like for instance GW's Crack Brown is ideal. Just thin it until you get a wash like consistency and just yeah, go around picking out all of the parts you want to be rusty. Now I'm not insane enough to try and edge highlight all of the metallics. I just use a, a quick and uh, easy dry brush again with a small tip uh, with some label steel uh, to go around them. Very careful application here. Don't go too insane with fast strokes on this. Um, the good thing is there's a high contrast between the, the shaded metallics, the iron hand steel uh, and the silver so even the lightest touch will be visible. Um, so if you bump it up a, a notch or two in terms of the, the contrast between those two, even a light touch with a dry brush can do go a long way for your edge highlights here. Now, um, this is not edge highlighting with ceramic white. One of the eye-catching parts of the bike uh, that I wanted to achieve were the glowing engine bits and uh, I'm using a fluo paint for those. Um, and you have to work those into the, the recesses that you want to end up glowing. The approach is different. I am using my wet palette with slightly thinned paint this time around because I do want it to run into the recesses. I get the finest tip brush I have in my collection and I just start working that white into those holes. I'm trying to leave a slight amount of the black lining in there if possible uh, because that will really work with the very transparent orange paint I'll be using in the next stage. Yeah, it's just a case of now going around with as steady a hand as you can, filling in the, the parts that you want to appear to be glowing with, uh, with that paint. 
you're finally introducing your first color that isn't um, a silver or a black or a white, so you do want it to pop as much as possible, and the uh, the next color will using that orange fluo needs that white undercoat to actually have its vibrancy uh, and to be yeah, showing up. It really is a thick and gloopy paint, I thin it about one third, but you can't go much thinner than that because it does uh, it won't have any covering power if you dilute it too much. The gel-like nature of the paint does make it ideal to run into uh, those recesses and I find it fairly easy to apply. It's easier to apply than the white paint underneath it. And then you just go around slapping that, uh, that fluo gel into all of the recesses and, and make sure you get it all over the place. If you hit a bit of the black lining you've left in the previous step, that is exactly the point that will add to, the, uh, you know, to it appearing to glow. Another tip I can give is be sure to work with the tip of your brush, so turn around your model often like I'm doing here to make sure you get a nice covering. Um, and I'm doing the same thing near the engine block near the end, uh, that pipe over it. Turn it around often so you can uh, approach the edges with the tip of your brush which is always uh, the most important part of your brushwork. If you are able to work with that one, you will have nice control over where you apply that paint. So I'm flipping it here so I can dab it into the edges, get it all the way in. Now once that's all dry, uh, you will have a nice solid orange coat that will have uh, some shading near the end because of the black lining you've left, but I do want to accentuate that slightly more. Um, uh, I added a small amount of uh, red glaze to it as well. Now the next stage I'm doing is painting the the, the saddle. We slapped a bit of uh, the, the contrast paint on it but I now want to give that a more solid covering and to do that I use the same cyborg brown but I mix it in with a universal highlight color like Vallejo Ice Yellow. Uh, those contrast paints can be mixed with them um, and if you mix it with a regular um, acrylic paint, uh, a universal highlight color like this one, you can get a very good um, dark tone to mix it in and as you mix in more of the yellow you will create a bit of a mid-tone to work with as well um, so you can start working on the, the leather parts of the, the saddle. You do want to make sure that you rub most of it off like I'm doing here on a bit of tissue uh, so it doesn't run everywhere and yeah, I'm just reapplying this uh, more covering paint to the central parts of the leather of the, the seat and work my way around it like so. The contrast paints do sometimes um, you know, dry a bit coffee stainy, a bit blotchy and this is a perfect way to uh, cover them up. Why use contrast paint then to begin with to cover it up? Well I do like the fact that they often uh, apply a neat outline so you know where to hit with uh, with your blacks and everything around it. Once I'm done applying the darkest tone I just work around the edges with uh, the, the lighter tone, the mid tone uh, and just go around the bike this way until uh, the very end where you get to mix in a, quite a lot of the ice yellow actually to create a very sharp contrasting uh, highlight color which is what I'm doing right here. Um, and then you can go around edging, edge highlighting those parts of the saddle. Uh, remember to repeat it as well for the, the sort of the backrests at the end there, so everything has roughly the same color. Now, apart from some smaller details that still have to be added to the model, uh, we're almost done. I just mixed in three blues to do the, the headlights, and after those are done, you're essentially ready to assemble your model and the sub-assemblies. Now if you enjoyed this video and you liked something, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you uh, want to see how I get on painting the rider, I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye!